covering is essentially our support model. So we've done uh, quite a bit in the last uh, year uh, regarding you know what we sort of see support going to have to become. So you know we're going to have to be able to scale and uh, deal with more more cases, just the volume of it, the technicality because all the things that we're offering such as, you know, the Power BI Teams integration, we have to be able to support that. So we need to create a framework for, you know, where support's going and how we're going to be able to support our customers. So a lot of what we're doing is future forward. And we're thinking that, you know, what it is now uh, it was sort of just getting us to the next step and then there'll be another step after that. So in, in some ways, I think of all the stuff that we've done in the last year is phase one, and there's going to be multiple phases beyond this. So uh, from a housekeeping perspective, everybody's muted. No problem. Everybody knows, I think, where they can get questions. So I will skip this. So uh, for those that are not familiar with me, I'm the customer success manager, but I also take care of the uh, the support group and part of the marketing responsibilities. And Kasim, uh, who's probably not on yet, but he's on another session, but Kasim is a big part of a support team. He's usually the person that most people talk to when they submit support cases, and he's also our Power BI specialist. So Kasim gets a lot of traction, and uh, he's a great guy. And obviously, for those people that have had a chance to talk to him, he's awesome. So, and um, like we want to talk about the depth and breadth of the service options uh, in the new support program. So we've got a few different tiers of support, and not everybody's aware what the differences are or why they're even there in the first place. So we're we're building, we're working on things, and we want to expand what we think is a good, cost-effective, efficient, and detailed offering in support. Uh, and support is obviously not the only interaction that people have with iTrack. Right? People deal with our development side, they deal with the consulting of the professional services people, uh, CSMs like me, and marketing, and we all kind of work together to bring uh, the best thing that we can with assistance and education to our customers, right? That's sort of the goal. We want our customers to be happy, intelligent, all those things, right? That's pretty normal. So I'll go over what support does, you know, what are the different uh, versions and tiers of support? How are they different in comparison? What are the biggest benefits? You know, how do I derive value beyond just, you know, people answering my support cases? I'll talk a little bit about this uh, document that we have called the support product offering matrix or the support matrix. And we'll talk a little bit about our legacy customers, which we have some, and then we'll talk a little bit about what the future holds. So at the most basic level, support at iTrack is the main interface being the customer in iTrack, um, besides maybe the consultants. And it's the answer to the question is, who do I email if I don't know who to talk to? If, if you have no clue at all where to start with something, support's a great way to go. And for those uh, customers that know us as Neo Systems, also will now know us as iTrack 365, but the email will remain at, as support. And that's going to stay there. And the exercise that we've been doing is uh, focusing on a lot of standardizing the service, uh, simplifying of service, uh, the expansion of things that we do, and thinking about future developments. Okay. So a couple highlights, we kind of looked at what last year looked like versus this year. So we had about a thousand support cases last year and we're about not even quite halfway through the year and we've already got a 450 or so cases. So we're pretty much on track for about the same number, probably more likely to be even busier. So the caseload is growing. So on the front end, you know, we intake the cases, we triage, we route and distribute to the various people that are going to work on the cases and obviously follow up all from the customer side. We fix a lot of tier one issues, so user security access, that sort of stuff, some minor dynamics and eye track setup. We help out with uh, getting how to's to customers either by email or digging up a document. Uh, we do a lot of training and we're working on building up our documentation scheme. So that those are the sort of the, the very basics of support. And then we're building internal learning so we can handle more and more tier two uh, and maybe even down the road tier three issues without having to go to other people. So if we're able to do that in support ourselves, then we don't, uh, we don't need to rely on as many other groups or people. We can answer the support cases faster. And then that cycle of learning just uh, self-perpetuates and we just become better, better at uh, helping out customers. And again, Trevor had mentioned it. I mean, maybe we weren't always the best at it. So, but we got to lay the groundwork in order to move forward. 
and obviously if you've dealt with us on through support size you know that we sort of handle the liaising with all the other groups within iTrack. So we also focus a lot especially in the last year on education. Um, our iTrack webinars have been a weekly thing uh, since uh, January, end of January is when we started. We've done uh, 20 different webinars now and the topics that we focused on is the stuff that I think users are most commonly interested about, user management, Power BI stuff, Microsoft UCI changes, how to create document libraries, um, portal navigation. Uh, we did uh, one with Diane on procedures and competencies and we've covered our uh, COVID-19 community edition. So those are a lot of things that we handle. They're sort of high volume items. So we focus on those and we're, we're building up the type of things that we do in webinars. So as the year progresses, we'll focus on different topics. Some we'll keep doing because there's interest in them, but obviously we'll cycle through to make sure that we've got a good coverage of content. The other exercise that we're doing uh, is uh, we're building up a lot of documentation. So we found that we do have a lot of documentation, but it's either customer specific or it's maybe a little dated or it hasn't been keeping up with the versions of iTrack or Dynamics. So we do have quite a bit of an exercise to get that documentation to a good state so that we can start uh, sharing it um, more and more. We're also looking potentially maybe not using things like Excel and Word and maybe look at it something online through our website. And when we're looking at this plugin called Documenter, so that might be the way that it ends up going. We're not sure yet. And uh, we're uh, building up sort of uh, like a, a process for intaking on these learnings. So frequently asked questions, uh, defect notification, feature requests, and instead of just taking them and you know resolving the issues, we want to create a feedback loop and figure out how we can turn that into uh, usable items. So people can uh, you know maybe vote in a community. People can. Uh, you know, suggest things that we do as a webinar, like we have to figure out different ways of taking those things that are coming through support and doing interesting things with them, right? So learning, documentation, that's a big part of it, but you can go beyond and you can think about community building. So I've had previous experience doing that, so I'm pretty comfortable. I think we can get it there, but uh, like again, uh, baby steps. So on the version side, uh, we, I kind of think about it that we have three tiers, but technically speaking, we have four tiers because we have we've got the legacy, we got our standard tier, premium and premium plus. So legacy is all the pre-existing agreements that are in place for our older customers or custom uh, arrangements that we've made and put in place because of the specific version or contract conditions that exist. So those things are too hard to massage into the, the other three tiers. So we think of them as kind of like a legacy tier onto its own. The standard tier is the complimentary service that you receive as long as your current iTrack or iTrack 365 customer with an agreement or subscription in place, and uh, it doesn't cost you anything. The premium and premium plus are complimentary tiers, or sorry, they're additional tiers, optional, that go above and beyond standard. So in premium's case, it includes everything that's in standard plus additional services, and same with premium plus. Premium plus includes everything that's in standard, everything that's in premium, and then some additional things as well. And obviously, because they are premium and they have an additional cost. So, focus on uh, some of the key highlights of each one, just so people get a sense of what the differences are and why they're there. So, our standard tier, the the hours of support are from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on uh, Monday to Friday, Mountain Time. Premium extends those hours by a little bit, uh, gets you a little bit later into the afternoon or a little bit early into the morning. And then Premium Plus, uh, which would be designed for customers that operate a 24 uh, uh, 7 cycle. So it could also apply to our customers that are in totally different time zones, like our New Zealand friends, or it can also be uh, customers that have three shifts, right? So it's meant for global coverage. So we also have uh, what's often referred to as uh, SLAs, but you can just think of them as resolution and response times. So at the standard uh, level, we don't have an SLA in place. Everything's done on a best effort only basis. So that means if we're not busy, that's great because then we'll do everything as fast as we can. But if we're really busy and you're a standard support customer, uh, you would be second in line behind a customer that would be on our premium or premium plus tier. So every case that come in gets assigned high, medium or low uh, triage value. And based on those, these are the SLAs I would have in place with premium and premium plus. And I highlighted an example of medium because I think most cases that come in are either low or medium, but let's say most of them are medium or urgency or difficulty or whatever. 
uh, we classify those. So if you're at the premium, that the SLA in place is a four hour initial response and a two day resolution. And then if you look over one to the right to the premium plus side, you'll see that it's the, it's basically doubled. So the guaranteed fastest response time that we can provide is two hour response time and one day resolution. So that's kind of the big thing. So for customers that really care about how quickly you get back to them on an issue, obviously premium and premium plus makes a lot of sense. The contact methods, most customers that talk to us by email or customer portal. And so that's the sort of the, the normal uh, way of doing things in standard. And in premium, we expand that out further. The email portal still works, but we also give uh, people the option to ring us up on our phone number. We also at the bottom see we've got uh, the emails as well. So you, even if you're a premium customer, you can still email the normal uh, support email, but we do have a one for premium support that just uh, goes to the top of the support inbox. And then uh, on the premium plus side, again, we're, we're kind of building out that a little bit further. So email, portal, phone, I give you my mobile number, we're working on a chat window, and we're also uh, gonna fiddle around with maybe doing a virtual AI agent from uh, one of the tools that, toolkits that Microsoft has. We're not there yet, but we're definitely thinking about it. So the goal there is if you're on the premium plus side, it's basically whatever way that you prefer to reach out to us, we wanna make sure that that flexibility is there. So we're not forcing you to go to email, which is our preferred method. You can reach out to us in almost every single way. Okay. Case escalation. So at standard, there's no escalation manager. So usually, you know, if it's been too long about a case, your the solution is to email support again and ask what's going on. Whereas if you're premium or premium plus, you get a dedicated escalation manager, which is, would currently be myself. And then in case of premium plus, you would get an escalation manager plus the department manager. So somebody like a Darren. So you'd always have somebody you're able to reach out to and escalate cases as needed. That's big. Documentation, we're a little bit more liberal here. Uh, so all levels of support gets free uh, documentation library. So the access to the library that we're building and refining, but uh, with uh, premium customers, we'd uh, also help them out with custom customizations to the documentation. So we'd be able to plug in your logos, your color schemes, uh, procedure, procedural adjustments that are unique to your setup. And then if you're premium plus, we'd also help with building documentation from scratch. So if some document doesn't exist and we'd say, okay, how would you like this document to look? And we would go from there. Training, again, we provide a lot of uh, free training. Uh, so what, uh, what the differences would be then is just the amount of customization that we're willing to do. So standard user and admin training would be sort of the way that we would, we do it normally, right? We would say, okay, here's what a person would do to enter in a form or to do a corrective action or whatever. That's our standard. We would be happy to do that for anybody. Once it gets over to the premium, then we can start doing separate sessions for that customer and say, hey, you know, we'll teach it the way that you teach it to your users, for example. So modifications to the process. And then once you're on the premium plus side, we would also include classroom training. So if people are not familiar with the, with the term, it basically means it's like an onboarding thing. So when you got new users, they sit through classroom training to become um, you know, uh, ready or qualified for their job. And we would take over some of that uh, sort of repetitive training uh, as you onboard new users internally. And right? so it's, it's meant to fit as many needs as possible. Okay, costs, obviously that's the big question. So standard is included. And we do exclude some of the customers that are uh, legacy because of whatever weirdnesses that they have, they might not fit our standard tier. And that's understood. And then premium would be a thousand a month and premium plus would be uh, 25 bucks a month. So that's Canadian, I believe. Okay, so I've already mentioned some, some exclusions and variations, but I'll, I'll rattle through these ones too, just in case people are wondering. So uh, for the most part, with the exception of the legacy, uh, whether you're iTrack, on-prem, hosted, or cloud, it, you'd be eligible for any one of those. Uh, customers that are on our super old version, our iTrack 3, uh, would not. And then if you've got some combination of a legacy agreement or um, a certain setup that we, we maybe can't support just as easily, then you would have to fall back to our uh, legacy tier. And then any customers that are on an older agreement, we would eventually want everybody to sign the new support agreement outlining all these things that I just mentioned. So we're trying to do that all this year, 
but we're not in a terrible rush because we, we're doing all the stuff in conjunction with all the other things that we're doing, such as cloud migrations, uh, you know, dynamics upgrades, contract renewals, et cetera. So we try to not make this a separate exercise. So whenever we do contract stuff with customers, we can sort of work this in uh, alongside. So, and if you're one of those customers that doesn't have a new support agreement in place, uh, your life just continues as normal. You just pay the same way that you are, which is typically people pay either in bulk or they pay like a professional service fee hourly for the things that we do, right? So what I want to highlight there is that uh, you could be missing out on cost savings value added services if you're on some sort of older agreement because we have a lot of stuff that we've packaged into this new support model. Okay. All right, this, hopefully this is not a scary uh, slide because it kind of covers a lot but a lot of times what i have to sort of answer to either consultants or customers and you know say who does premium premium plus fit right How, why would i go for this extra extra service right and so i did some thinking and i said okay if you're already spending about 10 grand on support services you're probably a good fit for premium because for the same money that you're paying now and kind of an ad hoc support you to have structured support and then you can get this extra stuff out of it right that's already there and pre-packaged so uh, it's a good way to get rid of variability in spending so we have customers that jump around quite a bit in spending so maybe one month you spend 20 grand and that's huge and then maybe you don't spend anything for the next three months right so because of those peaks and valleys uh, maybe people are afraid to reach out to support for help so paying a flat fee helps out with that all right, premium is also good for P, uh, customers with multiple locations or just a lot of people, but physically just a lot of people that need to interact with uh, our support side. Uh, high volume, it could also be like if you have urgent needs that need to be taken care of in a very small window, like in that the window of time. So obviously because we have the guaranteed SLAs, that falls in line with that. And then it's also great for customers that are currently not utilizing those elements that are included, the training, the documentation, you know, the, maybe they don't know it's there, maybe they don't care, but they're, they're there, so they should use them. And then customers obviously that have more variations in their setup, thus requiring more tier two assistance that than tier one assistance, then that also pushes them into that premium category and then obviously reporting needs. So that's premium, that's the uh, thousand bucks a month one. And then premium plus, it's even a harder question to answer in some respects, but it's an easier question in a lot of other respects too. Again, so if you're already spending anywhere around the 25K, um, then you're, you're pretty much in line whether you'd be paying for premium plus and you can get all this other stuff. Again, if you're a variable spender, that's more, more all the more reason to go for more of a flat fee. Uh, customers that are either international, geographically dispersed, or have those three shifts of operations when they're 24 seven. Again, that puts you in the premium plus bucket. And then again, even higher volume, even more urgent ca uh, case response requirements, right? That's that's sort of another checkbox for premium plus. And then especially if you are doing a lot with like the development side, the dynamic side, uh, you know, tinkering with uh, integrations to other systems. So if you do all that extra stuff outside of just using iTrack from the portal mobile, that really puts you into that that side where the extra stuff that we include, like the the assistance, the technical guidance, the auditing help, the tier three stuff, that definitely puts you into that category. Right. So what are the underutilized things that people maybe don't even think about that we offer that they might need? So um, besides the cost savings, which uh, sort of already explained. Uh, premium would have longer hours and more flexibility in case handling. The the notion of case escalation is big. Uh, we help out with troubleshooting without having to go to um, professional services to help customers out with forms. We do more flexible training and documentation. We do more assistance on the dynamic side, such as you know uh, creating advanced finds, special views, reporting wizards, that kind of stuff. And premium also gets you early releases, which people don't know about. So customers that want to see what the next versions look like so they can play around with the options that are in there, premium uh, provides that as an included service. Premium, we're also more flexible about iTrack upgrades. So you'll you'll be hearing more about what we want to do with our upgrades in the, in the coming months. So I'm not going to focus too much of it here. But with premium, would be we'll be more lenient about uh, you know when people can upgrade and how many versions, et cetera, as an included fee. 
And then underutilized gems of Premium Plus, again, cost savings 24 7, maximum coverage, fastest response times possible, maximum amount of troubleshooting without sending anything to PS, uh, more help with all the, the background stuff, Microsoft, Azure servers, network side, et cetera. Uh, the user onboarding, which I called classroom training previously, and then uh, you know things like the setup with Dynamics Eye Track. We just we would take more of that in support without having to go to professional services as a feed service, right? And some of these things we do put some limitations on them. It's not wide open. We don't we don't expect to be able to do something like full development at no cost if you're a Premium Plus customer. So we do have limits, but it's certainly a lot more than you would get at the standard tier. So this is kind of the document that I think maybe scares a bit of people. Uh, so what we did is um, when we we're building out our support program, we went through and we said, OK, what are all the things that we do? And then based on the way that we want to do it going forward, where does everything fit? All right. So things like, you know, submission from phone, email or portal. Uh, you know, where does tier one troubleshooting kick in? Where does tier two troubleshooting kick in? So we went through and we identified everything that we could. So this document resides on our website under the documentation page. So what I'll do, I'll just briefly show that to people before jumping back into it. Okay, so here it is on our website. And if you download it, it's just an Excel file. I'll just bring that up for people. So everything here in column A is all the services that we could think of that we do under support, professional services, development. And then we went through it all, uh, broke it into categories, and then said, OK, where does this thing fit? Does it fit standard, premium, premium plus, all of them, none of them? And so if something's not support, then it's professional services. And then in some cases where we want to have put a, an exception, for example, or a restriction, such as maybe there's a service that we only offer to cloud customers as opposed to hosted or on-prem, we try to identify that uh, where we could. And then when we think of something that changes, uh, either because we missed it or didn't think of it, or it's a new service to introduce, we would just keep updating this document. And then, you know, I just create a new version with this. And if the change is obviously major enough, we would communicate that through the support team and say, hey, you know, we've introduced this change. And there'll be some things that we change around, like, for example, the levels that we're reporting that we offer at each tier, for example. That'd be a common example. All right. So to highlight the things, then there's a lot in that document, so I don't want to go through that. That would take an entire session on its own. But um, if we think about the things that are high value but low utilization, these are the things that come to mind. So we obviously think our webinars don't have enough attendance, so that's one of those things. Uh, customers submitting defect finds and product requests. Uh, we don't think that customers are submitting enough of those either, so we can't QA things and fix them. We can't start cobbling together ideas in order to add them into next releases, right? So those are the things we want more of. We want more customers using our portal so they can see their own past cases. So they have kind of like a, a memory of the kind of things that people have uh, submitted. Um, we also want people to take more of the basic training, either asking for it or using our documentation. We want people to asking more for how to guides so we know what to build if we don't have them. We want to make sure that everybody's subscribing to our support newsletters because we put out one every month, sometimes twice a month, and we cover everything that we can think of that's relative or interesting. Uh, now that we're focusing on building up our social media, we want people following us more on LinkedIn, YouTube, and then we'll sort of eventually dust off Twitter and, and uh, Instagram as well. And we're going to start putting stuff on there. Um, so that would be just another channel, a uh, way of educating people and giving them information. We want the customers asking for licensing assessments. Uh, we want customers thinking about health monitoring of their instances uh, and how we can present that information. Uh, performance management for the customers that are really interested in, especially high volume customers that you're doing thousands and thousands of forms. Uh, we want people thinking about Power BI dashboards, how we can help you take the information that you're collecting from all your users and doing something with it. Uh, we want customers thinking about what to do with their sandboxes. Uh, again, either testing stuff out or uh, pioneering different ideas and different technologies. And we also want all customers to think about getting up to the, the latest and greatest uh, of iTrack and Dynamics because we do have quite a few laggards. So those things are all part of the support universe and we want more of that because we think it's high value, but it's underutilized. For those that 
uh, know a lot about our Power BI. This one, this is not a shocker. Um, so you know that we've got the capabilities in-house to be able to help out with your pre-existing reports, build new ones, new dashboards. We have actually packages of pre-built dashboards as well that we can just deploy and configure. So that saves everybody a lot of time. It can help with troubleshooting. Uh, you know, uh, we can KPIs that we're currently grabbing internally, but that might start making its way external as well. Uh, with Power BI, you can also do third-party data integration as well. So if you've got data that's an iTrack, you don't want to think about Power BI as only being an engine for that data. Uh, you can take iTrack data plus data from other sources, bring it together, and just visualize it in uh, Power BI. And we can also obviously do training for people that are lacking it. And then uh, we already do our webinar, webinars on Power BI as well. So that's the current state. We also are thinking about what the future holds. So there's, I took a few things that we have kind of already committed to, things that are probably going to happen and some things that we're still debating. We're not sure what's going to happen. So we already know that before we currently have a case submission dashboard for our premium uh, plus customers. So that way they can see all the cases that their users are submitting. And right now it's only premium plus, so it's underutilized. So I think we'll move that down a tier to premium as well. So customers they can see, you know, oh, what are my users submitting, right? So that helps you with a learning, uh, that helps you with identifying maybe where you've got uh, users that are under under educated or maybe at least under uh, sourced. Maybe you just need to provide them documents that exist and you've got that internally. And seeing the cases that people are submitting identifies those uh, those potential gaps. Um, we're doing enhancements to our standard Power BI report and dashboard package. Uh, we're creating better release notes for all our versions of iTrack. Uh, we're obviously working a lot to improve documentation, and we've been asked to do more how-to videos. So we're all, we're all committed, we're all on board onto those things, and they're gonna all happen. And then for next year, uh, kind of the three big things that we think we wanna do is uh, uh, work on some sort of community forum idea. Uh, whether that's going to be done through teams or through the website we're not sure yet but that that needs to happen i think we're also uh, uh, starting to dabble with some data mining and statistics and we want to think about how we want to present that data back to the customers because the data is all there we, uh, so there'll probably be some sort of opt-in thing at the beginning uh, we want to make sure that uh, customers are comfortable but i think there's intelligence in that data so, um, and I'm kind of big on visualizing uh, data elements. So that will probably happen. And we also want to think about now that we've got um, a marketing person in Aaron, uh, we want to uh, take take an opportunity to start monitoring real time issues and trends in the various industries that our customers are at. So again, that's just about scouring the information and presenting the information to customers so they can make good decisions going forward, right? So there's stuff that's not specific to iTrack, but it's interesting to your industry. And if we can help you see a trend coming, that makes it better for you to grow, and, um, obviously prepare for any kind of major changes. Obviously those are kind of things that everybody's talking about, use of AI, robotics, et cetera, et cetera, you know, globalization, uh, supply chains. Those are the kind of things that we think we can look at. And then on the debate side, we are debating whether we're going to reintroduce the phone number to everybody or not, or just keep it for the premium customers. We're also thinking about are there other ways that uh, customers want to get in touch with us, whether through some sort of chat on our website or maybe through WhatsApp or other channels. Um, this conference has been our sort of way to uh, look at whether uh, doing Teams groups is a, is a way, another way that customers can submit cases. Um, that is a potential. I mentioned the virtual agents on Microsoft AI, basically a chatbot that can answer very low level questions. We'd obviously have to integrate it and train it to, to do so, but that's a possibility. We're debating how many versions we're gonna be letting customers upgrade for free. So we do have customers that are, you know, four, five, six versions back. And we, you know, once customers get that far back, we probably have to charge them. So we have to figure out where that happy medium is for us and the customer. Um, we have to talk about, uh, real-time performance management. Uh, and if we were introduce a dashboard like that, you know, what are the kind of the statistics that customers we want to see and we could present and how it would look, you know, is that only doable for cloud customers? Don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a debate. We're talking about it internally. And then similar uh, KPIs. So KPIs, we're talking about like average form submission time or something along that line, right? We can kind of capture that information wholesale and maybe present it to those that are interested. 
So we do have to think about whether we want to do something like that in the future as well. So a lot of ideas, like I said, this is, I'm thinking what we've currently done is just a phase one and there's more phases to come. So I think that's it. Um, I'm sure people have questions, so I'm just going to leave it open. And if anybody has anything that they want to talk about or go back to a previous slide, uh, do let me know. So thanks for attending. If you think of any questions, support at Neosystems is where you can find us or hit us up on the Teams chat like people have been doing. And then obviously check out the sessions for the rest of the event. There'll be some uh, full day, even more, so more sessions tomorrow. Today was 10 sessions, tomorrow's 12 sessions. So lots to go. All right, thanks everyone.